Hana Bata Manga. I'm Maya. I've been married for three years and I live with my husband, Masaki. I have certain allergies. I get allergic symptoms when I eat food with artificial broth. I especially can't eat chemical seasonings. That's why I haven't been able to go out and eat out on dates since Masaki and I started going out. We would have lunch in my room and even dinner, so it was out of the question for us to celebrate our anniversary at a fancy restaurant. Lately, I've been thinking that I'm healthier than I used to be. I feel like I'm detoxed and I don't catch colds as easily. I'm really sorry I am the reason we couldn't go out to eat. Don't worry about that, Maya. Your cooking is delicious. I'm a lucky guy. Thanks. Yet, Masaki stays with me without complaining about it in any way. It's a lot of work just to cook every day. I'll do the laundry and whatever I can do. He says this helps me with a lot of the housework. I was grateful to be blessed with such a husband, and I lived happily every day. By the way, it's Dad's birthday next week. We're having it at my parents' house, and my mum is asking me if you'd like to join as well. What do you think? I haven't seen your father in a while, so let's go. I just won't eat. There's a reason why my husband is so considerate to me. When I went to my husband's parents' house, shortly after we got married, I visited them at the mealtime and offered to help in any way I could. The kitchen in this house is my castle. I was told and couldn't help with anything. When I sit down, you don't do anything, do you? And I was scolded. The food my mother-in-law cooked was Japanese food such as meat and potatoes and simmered dishes. I had told her about my allergies beforehand, but it would be rude to ask for confirmation and I wasn't watching the cooking process. So just to be safe, I pretended to be engrossed in the conversation and decided not to touch the food. I thought it might be rude, but I didn't want to cause any allergic reactions or anything like that here, so there was no other choice. But in the end, my mother-in-law got annoyed that I didn't touch the food and... You're a rude wife, and I've never heard of an allergy to broth in the first place. If you don't want to eat my food that badly, you don't have to come. After saying that to me, she said to my husband, You're always welcome to come alone. You're staying the night, right? My father-in-law intervened when things were about to get awkward. I apologized for not being able to eat and the situation was settled. But since then, they contact my husband frequently asking him to come. My mother-in-law told him not to bring me along. I couldn't figure out why she suddenly decided to invite me this time but I was honestly happy that she invited me. So I decided to pick out a gift for her as well. I have a surprise to tell them too, so I'm sure they'll be happy. With some trepidation, we headed for my husband's parents' house. Alright, take a seat. I worked harder than usual today. My mother-in-law greeted us with a smile upon our arrival. My father-in-law was a man of few words, but he was happy when my husband gave him a gift. My mother-in-law treated me normally too, and it looks like it was a needless worry. I was relieved. Maya can't eat artificial broth, right? I'm making broth from seaweed and dried bonito flakes today, so it'll be okay. <laughs> I'm sorry for causing you inconvenience. The food my mother-in-law took the trouble to make for me. I decided to eat it without question. <coughs> my throat! <coughs> <coughs> I can't breathe. I dropped the bowl I was holding in distress as my husband noticed the sound of my breathing. <coughs> I can't breathe. When I thought I was done, my husband who knew how to deal with this held me in a comfortable position. But the symptoms progressed and a rash started. If this continues and causes a seizure, it could be fatal. Are you okay? Let's go to the hospital now. I'll get the car. My husband ran to get the car which was parked in a nearby coin-operated parking lot. My mother and father-in-law were left in the room with me, and then as if my mother-in-law had been waiting for this moment, she began to say, It's the same bonito broth they use everywhere. Maybe you're not allergic, but there's something wrong with you. Or maybe this bonito broth is defective. It's not the time to be saying that. 
You shut up. We're celebrating. I can't stand it. You're that weak, huh? My father-in-law has my back, but my mother-in-law? She yelled at me mercilessly, still being unable to move. We might never be able to see our grandchildren because of this girl. Don't you know the saying, three years without a child, then divorce? You're supposed to back off. I don't want to see you die here, so just go to the hospital and die. In a daze, I looked at my mother-in-law and saw my husband behind her, looking like a demon. Mom? Is that how you thought of Maya? There are some things you shouldn't say out loud. And when you asked me to bring Maya today, this is what you were trying to do. N no, Masaki, I didn't mean any harm. I just wanted you to enjoy the food. There's no excuse for something like this. Besides, the whole reason we came here today was to report Maya's pregnancy. I thought it would be a great present for Dad. What? You're kidding. Yes, I was pregnant. I was still in the early stages of pregnancy, and I was starting to experience morning sickness. I don't know what I'd do to you if something happens to Maya and the baby. Masaki, I called the nearby general hospital. They said to go in through the emergency entrance. Anyway, you need to hurry. Thanks, Dad. And so I was rushed to the nearest hospital. While we were on the move, my father-in-law had given them all the details, including the fact that I was pregnant. A doctor from the obstetrics and gynecology department was also on standby. Thanks to that, I was able to undergo quick and proper treatment. Fortunately, neither I nor my baby were seriously harmed. Maya, oh Maya, thank God. I was really scared because you said you couldn't take medicine. My husband was crying next to the bed, as if all the tension released when I became conscious. After a while, my father-in-law came. My mother-in-law, who seemed to insist that it wasn't her fault, didn't come. Dad, I'm sorry, but tell Mum she doesn't have to come, and tell her we're not letting her see our child. Yeah, okay. Maya, I'm really sorry this happened to you. And my father-in-law bows his head deeply. He gives my husband a small sum of money to pay for the treatment. Please take care of yourself, and give birth to a healthy child and left after saying that. Eight months later, I was able to give birth to a healthy baby boy. My mother-in-law pestered my husband with phone calls, but he ignored them all. And one day, she even came directly to the house and rang the doorbell insistently. My husband was home on maternity leave to deal with the situation. I'm calling the police. I don't care if you're my parent or not. After being yelled at, my mother-in-law left. My husband told me I never have to deal with my mother-in-law again. My father-in-law told me he felt the same way. My father-in-law, on the other hand... I'm going to leave her when I retire. After a few years, they divorced, and he started living in the countryside, which he had always wanted to do. I was relieved when I didn't hear from her for a while after getting addicted to a host club. But when she ran through her savings and even got into debt, Hey, let me borrow some money. And she would frequently come to our house asking for money. Upon discussing it with my husband, we moved far away when our child entered elementary school. Six months after we moved, my husband was transferred. He didn't have to change jobs. And me and my son started to get used to our new life. And above all, my mother-in-law wouldn't be coming anymore. Rumor has it that my mother-in-law, who was saddled with a huge debt, ran around crying to all her relatives. And one of them runs an inn. She's forced to work there without pay until her debts are paid. Well, at least she gets fed and shelter from the wind and rain. I am Tanako. I will be 50 years old this year. My son Takashi and I have been supporting each other in our lives. When Takashi was in my belly, I also had a husband. I thought we would have a happy life with my loving husband and our newborn baby. But reality was different. Tanako, I'm taking your husband. Sister, what are you talking? He's sleeping right next to me. He snores a little too loud, but he looks cute. I can't believe it. He's cheating? Cheating? 
Aren't you so brazen? It was his mistake to marry you. He should have married me. Mom and Dad also said, That husband is too good for Tanako. Let him be Aiko's husband. N no. So you'll have to sign and turn in the divorce papers. Bye. My sister always took what I had. My parents only loved my sister who was good at what she did. And I was treated poorly by the rest of the family. I gave up love for my blood family. And I wanted to start a new family. I wanted to create a warm bond there. And I thought I would marry my husband and create a happy family. But my dreams were shattered by my sister. 25 years have passed since that sad event, and my son Takashi is now a respectable member of society. It was not easy to raise my son as a single mother, but because Takashi fully supported me, we were able to lead a happy life together as mother and son. Takashi supported me with housework and also studied hard and got accepted to a national university. He even received a scholarship and it cost almost nothing for tuition. You really grew up to be a good son. Takashi is your mother's pride. That's too much, Mom. I want you to have an easy life as soon as possible. That's why I studied hard in college and was able to get into a big company. I'm gonna return the favor from now on. Takashi, how lucky I was. I don't have a husband, but we were the happiest family in Japan. I thought so from the bottom of my heart. But the evil hand that threatened such happy times was approaching me. Two years after Takashi entered the workforce, he brought his girlfriend home. I was a bit surprised because I didn't think Takashi would be someone who would choose a girl like that. But I trusted him because it was my son's own decision. And then he told me he wanted to marry the girl, and at the meeting of two families, a terrible thing happened. These are Yuri's parents. Nice to meet you. I'm Tanako, Takashi's mother. Oh, Tanako. Long time no see. Sister, what are you doing here? You're still stuck up, aren't you? It's because I'm Yuri's mother, of course. Why? What a coincidence. <laughs> You're so naive to think it's a coincidence. Of course not. Mom and Dad told me your son turned out to be too good for you. I thought I'd take him. But it's not easy raising a kid, is it? You don't even know how good they are until they're old enough. So I thought why not let him grow up more and only take him when he starts to produce profit. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Luckily, we had a girl. If he becomes my son-in-law, he would basically be mine. Takashi, I hear you're the most promising newcomer at the big company. How lucky of me. I'll have a good retirement. <laughs> what? Why did Takashi end up with their daughter? Oh, didn't you hear? Yuri is carrying Takashi's child. What? A boy has to take responsibility now that he has a child. No way. Is that what you're after? Did you set this up? <laughs> What's wrong with that? It's your fault you had better children than me. Who do you think you are? Of course, after he's married into my family, he'll never see him again. You understand? <laughs> my sister's high-pitched laugh echoed in my head like a nightmare. I thought my life would continue happily after Takashi got married, but the unexpected event left me in despair. But even though they have a baby, there is no difference in the fact that Takashi and Yuri love each other. I couldn't oppose their marriage just because of me and my sister's problems, so I couldn't say anything. And on the day of the wedding, I desperately put on the face of a mother celebrating a marriage. My sister is sitting in her seat with a victorious look on her face. I was so sad I wanted to disappear toward the end of the ceremony. It was time for Takashi to read a letter to me. Mom, 
thank you so much for raising me all by yourself. I know it was really hard to raise a child by yourself. Despite that, you raised me without complaining, which I think is really great of you. You must have been surprised at my marriage with Yuri, because to you, Yuri is your sister's daughter with your ex-husband. The audience froze when Takashi said this. I couldn't understand what was said for a moment either, and it took a few seconds for my brain to start working. <laughs> hey, Takashi! What are you talking about? Mother-in-law, or should I say aunt, because you're my mother's sister. Did you think I didn't know about this? Takashi looked straight at my sister. In his eyes, there seemed to be a light of justice to judge evil. I saw my mom's photo album once. That's when I saw a picture of you, aunt, and a picture of dad too. My mom had told me about you two. Looks like your habit of wanting everything that belongs to mom hasn't been fixed yet. I can't believe there's such a difference in humanity, even though you're sisters. My sister's face grew redder and redder at Takashi's words as she got up from her chair with a loud bang. What are you talking about? You are my adopted son-in-law who is going to support Yuri and the baby. You should know your place. Yuri's baby is not mine. What? Aunt may have arranged it, but unfortunately, I'm not falling for the same trick as Dad. <gasps> what? I think she tried to get me drunk, but I'm a strong drinker. On the contrary, Yuri got drunk and fell asleep. Well, she didn't seem to have any memory of it, so I made up the story, as she might have wanted to hear, but... No, that means... Right, then whose child is the baby in her belly? From here, I'd like to talk about Yuri's friendships for all of you. From there, it was Takashi's one-man show. Yuri's sleazy friendships were revealed and all the participants in the venue turned their eyes white at once. The wedding was, of course, cancelled. The sister and my ex-husband's past became public, and the fact that they had invited so many people from the company to make themselves look good backfired, and my ex-husband resigned from his position at the company. They had been fighting every day since then, Yuri had no savings at all because she was planning to rely on Takashi to have a child. So in order to raise the newborn baby, my sister had to go to work. But my sister who grew up spoiled had no experience in society, and she spends her days being yelled at and used by seniors who are younger than her. Thanks to Takashi, I will be able to spend my days with a clearer mind than before. He has grown up to be a fine son, and I am truly a lucky mother. One of the main reasons I decided to marry my current wife was because she's a good cook. It's not that she can cook fine food, but she can make good food with what she has in the fridge. She also likes creative cooking, and she made me many dishes that I had never eaten before. My wife is also good at making lunch, and her hobby is collecting lunchboxes and she enjoys changing the lunchbox depending on the menu. If she started an Instagram account, she would go viral. She is so good at taking pictures every day of her lunchboxes that female employees would want to use them as a reference. But one day, all of a sudden, my wife's cooking started tasting... bad. I mean, the balance of the seasonings is all over the place. When I ate the pickled vegetables, the vinegar was so strong that I spit it out. And when she made simmered dishes, it was either too light or too salty, and there was no consistency. I thought maybe she was sick, so I checked on her for a while. But nothing changed. My son loves my wife's cooking too, and he always takes seconds. But since then, he has about two bites. Thanks for the food. And takes snacks to his room. In addition to that, she somehow started to look more stern than usual, and stopped smiling. I was curious. Um... Did something happen to you recently? Well, I mean, it's hard to say that my wife's cooking has been bad recently, because she's always been a good cook. I asked my wife, albeit in a roundabout way, if there was anything wrong with her, but she would say she's fine. It only got worse after that, and although she pretended to act cheerful in our presence, 
She often sighed when she was alone in the kitchen doing chores. I already had enough of that light flavor. My son started to eat sweets instead of eating rice. I finally told my wife that this wasn't good. Sorry, but doesn't it taste a little plain these days? Oh, sorry. That's right. I'll season it better. I was relieved when my wife said that, thinking, oh, I'm finally going to be free of the bad food. Then the next day, I got a dish that was way too richly seasoned. I turned my face to my son, and when he saw his mother in the kitchen, Ew! He stuck out his tongue and made a disgusted face. But I knew exactly how my son felt. Last time it tasted thin, but this time it felt like guzzling soy sauce. We'll get sick if we keep eating this kind of food. Thinking this was getting out of hand. Sorry, I can't eat this. I felt bad, but I threw the food away. My wife was in tears. Hey, you must be tired. You don't have to push yourself too hard. Let's go out to eat once in a while. Yay, I want to go to the conveyor belt sushi place. We haven't been feeding him good food lately. So this time we decided to go out for sushi. My son's favorite. As soon as we got to the sushi restaurant. Delicious. And he ate it up. I felt bad for my wife, but it was the first good dinner I'd had in two weeks but she didn't want to eat it at all. What's wrong? What, didn't you like sushi? I don't know what's going on anymore. Hey, something must be wrong. Don't stress yourself out. Talk to me. We're family, aren't we? And then suddenly my wife started crying. Not expecting her to cry. What? What? I couldn't hide my confusion. People were looking, so after calming her down and urging her to wipe her tears, she said, I... I... might have cancer. We were puzzled by the unexpected response. What? What, 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 what do you mean? Actually, about two weeks ago, I started to feel something strange in my mouth. I've never had that before. At first... It was just a little soreness and a pain that I could live with. But I went to the dentist, thinking I had cavity. But then he said it was nothing. And it's been hurting ever since. Yeah. Especially when I eat strongly seasoned food. So I lightened the seasoning a little, and it got better. That's why the taste was so light. I couldn't even give it a taste because it hurt so much. I thought it would be okay if I added more soy sauce or sugar or something. I was taken aback by my wife's words. You thought it was okay. But it really hurts. And lately, it hurts when I talk. And sometimes I can't even sleep. Then I saw a show on TV about tongue cancer. And I was so worried. After seeing that, my wife immediately went online and researched more about tongue cancer. Then she hurriedly checked the inside of her mouth in a mirror and compared it to the symptoms described on the internet, realizing that she had similar symptoms in her own mouth. Upon closer inspection, she noticed a small white spot on the tip of her tongue, which she found to be intensely painful. So my wife thought that she had cancer and was depressed. It's just a mouth ulcer. How can you say it's just a mouth ulcer? Mouth ulcers are a type of cancer. Huh? What are you talking about? How can all mouth ulcers be cancer? What? What are you talking about? A mouth ulcer is a tumor. What? She is clearly misunderstanding. Then I explained in detail the difference between a mouth ulcer and cancer, but she was not convinced. How can it not be a cancer when it hurts this much? Enough! I'm going to the hospital tomorrow. She said in an angry tone. But the next day, as soon as I got home, my wife apologized. She went to the doctor, but... It's a mouth ulcer. I'll prescribe medicine to reduce inflammation. The doctor told her. Is it really mouth ulcers? Don't you have to treat it with anti-cancer drugs? The doctor laughed hysterically. 
<laughs> it's just a mouth ulcer. But it hurts so much. Is it that bad? Is it nothing compared to the mouth ulcers you've had in the past? Here, my wife finally started connecting the dots. Um, what are mouth ulcers? Well, the cause of mouth ulcers is not clearly known, but it is said that they often but it is said that they often occur when a person is not in good physical condition. Like tiredness or before a cold. It is inflammation, not cancer. Perhaps you've never had one before. Yes, I've never had it. I was just told that tongue cancer was a hot topic recently, and that it comes with the symptoms of a terrific and painful mouth ulcer. I thought it was the phase before cancer, like stage one. I heard the doctor laughed even harder when she heard that. My wife with an apologetic look on her face to me and my son. <laughs> I thought I had cancer, so I didn't have much of an appetite. And I was so scared that I couldn't sleep for days on end and went to work sleep deprived. So I was exhausted, both physically and mentally. I guess that's why the mouth ulcers didn't heal. If you had told me first, you wouldn't have had to go through all this pain. Our son and I wouldn't have had to eat the ridiculous food either. I'm so sorry about that. I almost started disliking my mom's cooking. Well, that's normal if you serve food like that every day. And since you were such a good cook, we both got used to delicious food. And then one day, the taste got really light or heavy. I was so full of myself that I... But we're a couple. A family, right? Of course we worry about you. So next time something happens, just tell us. Yeah. Then, when you get better, I want to eat your meat spaghetti again. Oh? <laughs> then I want to eat meat and potatoes and steamed rice. <laughs> Look forward to it. My wife was worried too, but I'm really glad she doesn't have cancer. I told my wife not to worry, but to be honest, I was pretty worried, so I was doing a lot of research. When she told me she was going to the hospital, I was nervous about what the diagnosis would be. I get mouth ulcers easily when I'm tired from work, so I keep medicine in the office. But I was really surprised to see my wife get it for the first time. He and I had been dating for two years, and even met my parents. We were planning to get married in the future, and every day was happy with him. But one day, I came home from work as usual. He and his affair partner were flirting in the open. The room I always cleaned was a mess, and on the table was an empty bottle of fine wine I had bought him. Oh, oh what? is this what are you two doing oh <laughs> this is your dull girlfriend pointing at me was a flamboyant woman who looked like she got around yeah yeah this is the dull girlfriend i've been using because she's got money i'm your dull girlfriend then as if mocking me the woman smirks hey did you know your only value was money because you buy everything I was able to use the extra money to eat good food with them and go vacations together. What an idiot. She didn't even notice. Both of them made fun of me right in front of me. I found myself in disbelief, wondering if this was real. I won't forgive you. I'm going to tell my father. What? That's hilarious. Telling your parents? You're like a child. <laughs> Seriously, I had dinner with your father once, and he was a real boring and wimpy old man. And you're gonna ask him to help you. I'd beat the hell out of him in a heartbeat. That's hilarious. What? You should feel sorry for him. You have to go easy on him. Both of you, get out of this room! Huh? You're the one who leads to leave? I'm the one paying rent! But it's in my name. Oh... I'm going to take all these designer bags. I look so much better with these bags and shoes than you. You're too dull for that. They giggled and mocked me. I had a good salary because I had a good job. So I bought him all kinds of things because it made me happy to see him happy. But when they said all of that to me, 
I was so frustrated and miserable that I ran straight out the house and called my father. My father was surprised to hear me crying. What's wrong, Tanako? What happened? My father called to let me know that he would be there as soon as he heard the location from me. And about 15 minutes later, two black luxury cars stopped in front of the apartment building. From there, five young men got out. Then they opened the door of the other car, and a man got out. I cried as soon as I saw my father's face. Then I cried and told him what he and that woman had done to me. As I was crying, my father, as well as the young people who came with me. They're not gonna get away with hurting the miss. They're not getting away with this with a scratch. And they were angry. Then my father and the young men went into my apartment. I didn't want to look at that scene again, so I stopped in front of my room. The young man opened the door with all his might and yelled as they walked in. They were already gone from the living room, and they were in the middle of having sex on the bed where he and I used to sleep. As soon as the woman saw my father's young men, oh! Who are you people? She cries out and wraps the sheet around her body. Next to her, also freaking out. Uh, who the hell are you guys? They both kept screaming. I told you I'd tell my father, didn't I? Huh? What are you talking about? He's not the same man I met the other day. He's my father too. He's from my mother's second marriage. But this man is my real father. Then my father gave him a sharp glare. It's you, huh? You're the one who hurt my daughter. What? No, no, I... From the young man surrounding him in my father's presence, he seemed to know what kind of man he was, and he turned completely naked and pale. Then my father declared an order. Hey, take these two. No! I'm sorry, Danico, forgive me, help! The young men put duct tape over their mouths and carried them out of the room. And they were put in a wagon that had been prepared at some point in front of the apartment building, as they both sniffled and cried. Help! I beg you! Uh-huh. You said you were going to beat the hell out of him earlier, didn't you? Then, my father and a young man glared at him. I, I didn't say that. I, I didn't say it, so, so help me. I ignored him. I hope you two get a good punishment from my father. My father is a Yakuza, but he doesn't do anything to people and is actually a really kind person, including the young men. He left my mother after I was born because he was the head and he wanted to make sure that my mother and I wouldn't be looked at with cold eyes from society. My mother remarried and became happy, so I saw my father often and kept in touch with him so he wouldn't be lonely. The young men were also really protective of me, calling me miss and pampered me. So I told my father to just scare the living daylights out of them and nothing more. I also thought it was a little bit uncalled for to tell my father, but I would have completely cried myself to sleep if I was alone and I was so frustrated. After that, I contacted one of the young men and I was relieved to hear that they were both released. I asked him what kind of punishment they got, and he told me they gave him a beating as a punishment. They then took the two deep into the mountains and dug a hole right in front of them. Apparently, both of them passed out in fear. And when the two woke up, they took them to the office and asked if they still want to be punished or pay me alimony. They both got down on their knees and apologized, crying, saying they would pay me as much as they could, so they settled for 10 million each. As for him, he collected the money by borrowing as much as he could with the cash he had on hand, and when that wasn't enough, they agreed to collect the other half from the company's payroll. The woman didn't have any cash at all, so she borrowed as much money as she could, but that wasn't enough, so she got a job at the bathhouse. I've been pretty gentle with him, my father said. And he's right. If a man like that gets serious, they wouldn't have gotten out alive. The young men. Are you sure, miss? I can hurt them more. They said that, but I can't go that far. No, that's enough. I mean, it wasn't good of me either. I involved my father in my problems with that guy, even if it was the spur of the moment. 
It's not your fault, miss. I can't forgive him as the same man. The young man comforted me. After that, a mutual acquaintance of ours talked to him because they work at the same place, and since the acquaintance hadn't heard anything about me from him recently. You don't talk about Tanako recently. Did you guys break up? When a colleague asked him casually. I'm sorry. <laughs> Please forgive me. He screamed and passed out, bubbling from his mouth. It must have been really traumatizing for him. When I dug a hole in a mountain, they said they weren't actually going to bury them. But if a group of men did that to me, I'd be scared too. I heard that Akko is desperately trying to make money as a bubble girl. She can't leave the business, no matter how she hates it, until she pays off her debt to me. There's no way she can see his lover either. She probably regrets it now. Although, it's too late. I should have taken revenge on my own, thinking it was a bad idea to get my father involved in this. But I was relieved those two who laughed and mocked me so much they got their punishments. My name is May. I am 27 years old. Right now, I am pregnant and I am due in about 2 months. I am full of anxiety every day because it's my first baby. But my husband Yusuke takes care of my health every day, so I am able to stay calm. I wonder if it will be a girl or a boy. Either way, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> we'll have to decide on a name soon. I've already decided on a name. I have both male and female candidates. I'm looking forward to it every day. I see. Then let's go with the name you decide. We were both looking forward to the birth of our child. I had no idea at the time that my husband would turn out to be such a changed man. Two months later, I gave birth to a healthy baby boy close to my due date. We named the child Coda. As my husband had suggested, Coda was a long-awaited child of ours. My husband and I loved him very much. Even the smallest gesture was adorable. However, there were times when we felt something was off while raising him. When I took my son to play at a children's center when he was one and a half years old, the other kids would say, Mom, look, I'm going to do this. But Coda just says, Uh, uh, and he doesn't speak very well. When the discomfort was growing, thinking there was something off, Yosuke also seemed to be concerned about it and started asking me more about it as he looked it up on the internet. Uh, Coda doesn't talk very much. When will he call me dad? Yeah, even the other kids are able to say mom and dad. I've been a little concerned about that too. What should we do? Should we go see a doctor? See a doctor? That makes it seem like Kota is sick. Maybe he's just growing slow. Shouldn't we take him to a health center? Yeah, let's take him to the health center for a consultation. He might have an intellectual or developmental disability, and the earlier he's examined, the sooner we can follow up with him. There's no way my kid is disabled. We don't know yet. I'm just saying it's a possibility. While my husband angrily leaves the room. Let's go to the hospital to clarify everything and think about it. If my kid was disabled, there's no way I could raise him. He blurted out. My husband had loved Coda up until now, so I was shocked. But I didn't immediately believe his words and tried to think that I just misheard him. When I went to the health center for consultation, the staff told me that there might be something wrong with him and recommended a hospital visit. But I went to the hospital that day and had it checked out. When I reported this to my husband, he hardly seemed to listen to me and didn't seem interested. Later, when I went to the hospital to get the results of the tests, my husband, who had seemed uninterested until then, suddenly appeared at the hospital. They're going to check up on him today, right? That'll make everything clear. Yeah, you're right. Although I was concerned about my husband, who seemed uninterested up until now, we decided to listen to the results of the diagnosis. As for the test results, he has an intellectual disability after all. Let's support him using different methods upon further examination. Uh, I see. What are the different types of support? Rehabilitation to encourage growth, sharing concerns with families who also have children with disabilities, and so on. We can also have a nurse or other healthcare professional check on him at home. Would that help a little? Will he be able to talk? It depends on the individual, but it will grow slowly. 
with the help of various people. He'll be able to talk better here than he can now. I was anxious until then, and I was relieved when the doctor told me about it. But my husband was listening with a doubtful look on his face beside me. A child is disabled, after all. Yes, he is. But with parental support, will you take him in? I don't want it. Both the doctor and I could not believe our ears for a moment when we heard these words. Without any concern, my husband kept talking. I don't want disabled kids. I can't raise them. What should I do in that case? Do I just leave him in an institution or something? What? Is there any facility that takes care of disabled people? Wait a minute! What are you talking about? Are you kidding me? There is no such facility. Please, discuss the future of your child's medical care with the two of you. And decide on a course of action. What? We're going to keep living together from now on? <laughs> no way. My, if you intend to continue to raise this child, you'll have to manage on your own. After saying that, my husband left. I was worried that I wouldn't be able to raise him after being told he had a disability. But he's still my beautiful child. I was stunned by my husband's words and actions, because I had never thought of leaving our kid anywhere. The doctor, who couldn't bear to look at him, introduced me to a counselor at the hospital. I was able to learn about various information such as rehabilitation methods, day services, counseling centers, and subsidy programs. I did not return home from the hospital, but took Koda back to my parents' house and told my parents in tears about what happened. They were surprised, but accepted me and Koda. They prepared everything we needed, including daily necessities, and they treated Koda as warmly as they treated me, and they were as affectionate towards Koda as I was. After that, I divorced my husband. I didn't want anything to do with him anymore, so we split our savings 50-50 and I even refused child support. Although he didn't have any intention of paying it from the first place, then life began to be hectic but peaceful with my parents, myself, and Koda. Thanks to the hospital and fostering, he grew up and is able to communicate better than before. That alone was enough to make us happy, but then we discovered that Koda had a certain talent. It was piano. Koda touched the piano for the first time in kindergarten and surprised his kindergarten teacher by immediately playing songs he heard for the first time. With Koda's motivation and his kindergarten teacher encouraging him, he started learning the piano, which he enjoyed and became very good at it. When he entered competitions, he started winning gold medals and even national championships. Now, Koda is 16 years old. He is now a bit of a celebrity, as he is even asked to perform in concerts. Then, my ex-husband suddenly paid a visit to our house. How are you? How's Kota? What are you doing here? I heard Kota's good at the piano. I bet he's making a lot of money from concerts and stuff. What are you talking about? I haven't forgotten that you told the doctor you didn't want Kota 14 years ago. You're lucky. No, no, I am... Um, I just panicked. You just panicked? You didn't even contact us since then. What's your intention? Well, it's not like I have an intent, but I'm a little short on money. Is that why you contacted me? For money? You work, don't you? What did you spend it on? Gambling. Gambling? You had it coming, didn't you? The minute you run out of money, you're gonna come crying to us? No way. But you're living comfortably on Kota's money, aren't you? Kota's my kid too, so can't you share a little bit? I'm saving all the money Koda earns so I don't have to worry about anything in the future. We live frugally with my own money. I don't do whatever I want like you. You're saving up? Yes! Then take some of that money and share it with me. I don't owe you anything. What are you talking about? But he's my son. I have rights. I'll support Kota too and you'd be better off with me, right? I was fed up with him and quickly called the police. As he was being taken away by the police, Koda heard the commotion and came out of the house, but then when he saw my ex-husband... Don't ever come back! He shouted. I don't know if Koda remembers my ex-husband, but there's no way I could forgive him for abandoning my beloved child just for him to suck up the honey. I'm just happy to hear him play the piano and laugh. 
I'm so grateful to Koda for giving me this happiness, and I'm so grateful that he was born. I have a sister who is a little younger than me. We fight a lot, but she was so cute to me. Maybe because we don't have a father. She never went to cram school, but she's smart. Goes to the national stadium when she runs, wins prizes when she draws, and I'm proud of her. I wanted to send her to college with my earnings, but she said she wanted to work early herself to make things easier for her mother. But her boyfriend, who followed her around whether she broke up with him or not, forced her to stay in the relationship, as she later told me. She ended up getting married as soon as she graduated from high school. She seemed happy when she would sometimes come home with her kid, but one day, when my sister came home, I thought it was strange that she wore long sleeves, even though it was hot. But when she rolled up her wet sleeves while doing the dishes, I discovered that her arm was covered in bruises. I was shocked. Hey, what happened to your hand? I asked, and she jerked her body for a moment at my words, then mumbled. I realized how easy you were on me. When the guy actually punches you, you really go blank and black out. She said. I couldn't take in what she was saying for a moment, but soon realized it was a bruise inflicted by domestic violence. Me and my sister were in the kitchen, and my mum was relaxing in the living room. Come over here for a minute. I pulled her by the hand and took her into my room and urged her to tell me everything. Then, I found out that my sister lives in a public housing complex with two rooms and a kitchen, but she's being forced to live with her in-laws, where six people live. She's sometimes made to stay at her in-laws' house, but since it's an apartment, there are not enough rooms to begin with, and not a lot of space to live together. After that, she told me that she was beaten and kicked by her husband and stepfather. My sister, though strong-willed, is short and has a slender body. On the other hand, her husband's family members are all tall and strong. Getting beat by people like that was like an adult against a child, no matter how much she tried to resist. Speaking of her father-in-law, he has been moving from job to job due to his drinking problem, and now he works part-time at a mahjong parlour. Her mother-in-law was such a bum that she had a lover and worked at their snack bar and asked my sister if she wanted to work there as a hostess. Sister-in-law one is a mistress of a right-wing leader and a hostess, and whenever something goes wrong, she shows her tattoo to settle the matter. Sister-in-law two is a hostess and also appears in adult videos. According to her, this was a step for her to become an actress. As she spoke, the things she had been holding back began to flow out of her with tears. I was stunned as I listened. Finally, my sister said, I can't live like this anymore. She said in a strained voice. Incidentally, it was the first time I had ever seen my sister crying as a grown woman. And I was so angry inside that I couldn't hold it. And I involuntarily put so much force into my fist that it shook. Furthermore, my sister discovered that her husband had a large loan after she got married and only gets 60000 out of her paycheck. From there, she has to give 30000 for her husband's allowance and 30000 on living expenses, not including food, and she can barely afford to eat one meal a day. She wore lots of layers of clothes, trying not to worry me and our mother, but her legs, hands and face were thinner than before, and I knew something was wrong but I thought she was just having a hard time raising her kid and had no idea this was happening. I showed her the forum with toxic parents because I had started looking at different forums on the internet after my sister's baby was born. You're brainwashed. If you can't beat them with force, beat them back with your head, I told her. And when I told her, but if you don't have the energy to do that anymore and you want to get out now, I'll do whatever I have to do to break it off and go beat up both of them. She felt like she had someone she could count on, and there was life in her eyes, and from there, she went for revenge. When she checked off the box that said, spouse, she was told she was being provided for, but then she explained the meaning of a spouse. To those who laugh at the news of the death of a middle-aged man due to shock from excessive bleeding, 
She explained the meaning of hemorrhagic shock to them. Anyway, she would sneer at them every time they laughed at her. They would almost punch her when she talked back at first, but as she kept the smile on the corner of her mouth. This is why I hate kids who don't know anything about the world. I took a pathetic woman like you, and you have the cheek to talk back to me. Get out. Her my sister was kicked out. But when my sister came home from my parents' house, she decided to record everything and get revenge on these guys. So she took the recorded video, tapes, and recorded conversations of abusive language on the drive recorder along with her kid and took it to the lawyer on the spot and sued. By the way, I paid for all the lawyers. I wanted to get in there and mess up the husband and his father. But we both need money to live from now on. And I thought money was the best way to get revenge on that whole family. So I looked up lawyers who were strong against domestic violence and told my sister about them. We not only had evidence from my sister herself, but also from videos, audio tapes and so on. So they were completely screwed. When my sister told her husband that she was divorcing him, he was furious. But I had evacuated her to our parents' house. So one time, when her husband... You got to be kidding me. You think you can divorce me? Came and lashed out. I'd already handed over the evidence to the lawyer, and I had no intention of letting her go back to my parents-in-law's house again. Thank you for everything you've done to my sister, and smiled right in his face. He never came back again. My sister won five million in alimony, child support, and medical treatment from the divorce, including domestic violence and the poor living condition she was forced to live in. Furthermore, her father-in-law and husband were to be arrested because my sister had reported them for assault and disorder and had all the evidence. She was physically thin and emotionally disturbed because she was living at home with her husband and her in-law's house. But after returning to our parents' home and the support from my mother who learned about the situation and being able to live without problems with money turned her expression brighter and brighter. After the divorce, she started looking for a job while our mother watched her kid. My sister had always been capable, so she found a job at a major company in about two weeks. Our mother works part-time, and I live at home and I had a good income, so I could provide for my sister, who has a small child. But my sister... I want to work so that we can live together properly from now on. So my mother and I decided to support her and help her. She got a job. Money from alimony and medical bills came in, so my sister was trying to move out of the house right away. But... It's been a long time since you've been out in the real world, and it's pretty hard to raise a child on your own while working, so you should just stay here a little while longer. When I told her... I'm sorry for all the trouble I've caused. She apologised, but I was worried she might get into trouble again out of sight, and that was harder on me mentally, so that was the better option. When my sister first evacuated to my parents' house, she was glad that the water and electricity were not cut off, as she had been living in such a poor environment. She was happy that there was stuff in the fridge and when I bought her new clothes. Are you sure about this expensive stuff? She would reluctantly say. <laughs> and when my mother, who is such a good cook, put several side dishes on the table. Uh, are you sure I can eat this much? She would ask her hesitantly. <laughs> I ate breakfast and lunch today, and now I'm allowed to eat dinner too? Even words like that came out. It was really hard to see our mother crying secretly, as she didn't realise the environment she was put through. But my sister is now living a powerful life, eating breakfast, working at a company, and taking care of her kid as best she can. Watching her like that made me feel happy. But by the way, after that, her ex-husband and ex-father-in-law were arrested. And with the alimony and other expenses, the family's funds ran out in no time at all. I also heard that the store where her ex-mother-in-law used to work stopped receiving customers after the rumours about this incident. I don't want a reminder of a difficult past, so I won't share that information with her. But I hope they all experience the hell she had to go through. That day, I was at a public swimming pool with my four-year-old daughter and my husband. We used to take a trip every year as a family. But because I was pregnant, we couldn't take my daughter anywhere, let alone a vacation. 
But I'm finally in my stable period, and the three of us were at the pool, promising to be careful. I had chosen a bathing suit that covered my belly, but because my belly is so big, people could tell I was pregnant. Mom, let's go swimming. <laughs> I'm fine. Go on and play with Dad instead. Okay. My daughter happily plays with the children's slide with my husband as I watch and wave. It was a weekday and the pool was relatively empty, but a group of high school boys were making a lot of noise. Take that! Stop it! They were splashing the water with both hands, causing others to get splashed as well, which make them look annoying. Ugh, such bad manners. I thought, and then I left the place for a bit. Mom, I want some juice! We'll have to wait quite a while for your turn, so I'll go get you one. Tanako, stay there. Okay, thanks. I watched a family with children while my husband went with our daughter to buy some drinks. <laughs> We're going to be a family of four soon. I can't quite feel it yet, but I'm looking forward to it. As I was thinking about this, the high school kids from earlier came toward me, making a lot of noise. I unconsciously took a step toward the poolside to avoid them, not wanting to get involved. As I was doing so, I turned my back to the group of students and tried not to make eye contact with them, when suddenly... Look at that fatty. Gross. How can she come to the pool with that ugly body? She needs to look at herself in the mirror. Hey, you're out of line. It's fine, it's the truth. I couldn't help but glance toward a group of students to such words. Then, with the person who said that, our eyes met. What are you looking at? Don't get in my sight with that ugly look. Ah, whoa! My body plunged into the pool, and that pool was a wave experience pool. A pool where you could experience big waves at a certain time, and in some places the water was up to three meters deep. And where I fell was in the deep part. I panicked because I couldn't get my footing but still managed to swim somewhere I could, but then my foot got stuck and I drowned. <gasps> Help! Luckily, the staff noticed me right away and pulled me out of the water. Are you okay? But my body was too heavy since I was pregnant and I couldn't respond right away. Uh, mommy! What happened? Are you alright? Your wife seems to have fallen into the pool. There is an infirmary, would you like to rest there? Then my husband, who had brought drinks for me and my daughter, came and rushed over to me. Uh, I was pushed into the pool. What? Are you serious? Uh, yeah. There was a group of high school students at the pool who were making a lot of noise. And it was one of them. I won't forgive them. Why did they do that? Uh, I was so scared. I couldn't get my footing and my legs were cramping up. I didn't know what was going to happen. You're fine now. I'm gonna find out who did this. I'll never let them get away with this. We left after that, but my husband called the pool manager and the police to explain the details of the accident. And because I was pregnant, an investigation was immediately launched, and shortly after, I received a call that a high school boy who was believed to be the culprit has been found. But the high school boy claims he did not verbally abuse me or push me down. My husband and I were outraged by this. My wife actually fell into the pool? My husband said so, but since there were no witnesses at this point, we had to discuss it with the other party. You've got to be kidding me. It's true that he was verbally harassing you and pushed you into the pool. At any rate, it sounds like he's willing to meet, so let's meet and talk. Then my husband managed to get the evidence before the meeting, and days later, we went to the meeting place. Then came that high school boy who pushed me down, and his mother. The mother was condescending from the moment she arrived. My son says he didn't. Are you sure you're not mistaken? Uh, no, your son certainly pushed my back. What? I didn't push. Her son is still the same as he was at that pool, joking around and showing no remorse at all. Don't lie to me. You certainly pushed me. Huh? What are you talking about, lady? 
Your body was off balance, and I reached out to help you. You can ask my friend who was with me if you want. I can't trust a friend like that. I'm pretty sure they're talking to each other anyway. I heard you're pregnant. Is that why you're being a little irrational? I'm angry how your son says he didn't do what he did and shows no remorse. But my son says he didn't do it, right? Fine then. You're after the alimony anyway, right? Uh, what? My son, you see, has been accepted to a very prestigious university. So I don't want this kind of accusation. Let's just get this over with. The mother then placed a thick envelope in front. It's not about the money. Oh my, are you trying to get me to raise the amount of money? Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> Poor people. <sighs> I see. So you're just going to keep your mouth shut. Can you say the same thing when you see this? Uh-huh. What? I showed them a certain video in which a schoolgirl was seen playing. Yay! Hey, don't film! Uh, what is this video? Since you're both keeping quiet, I've enlisted the help of a friend to spread the word online so I could find some witnesses. <laughs> Seriously, stop! Not the armpit! Then, one of the girls sent this to me. Uh, what? Watch the one on the left? I said and turned the volume up. What are you looking at? Then the male student and I could be seen in the video, and the whole conversation could be heard. Get out of my sight. Ah! Do you still want to keep your mouth shut after seeing this? They both turned blue when they saw the footage. Uh, I'm sorry. Please, forgive us. You, you need to apologize too. I'm... I... I'm so sorry. There is no forgiveness. Because of your son, I fell into a deep pool and was carried away to where I couldn't get my footing. If people find out about this, oh, my son's life. I almost died with my own child in my belly. If you're a mother, you should know how I feel. If your son had just acknowledged and apologized from the beginning, none of this would happen. But neither my husband nor I are willing to forgive you. We will send this to your son's school. After saying this, the mother broke down crying and her son was shocked. And then her son's admission to a very prestigious university, which he had been accepted to, was scrapped. And he was to take a year off. And then the whole school found out about it. And the other students, especially the girls. Ah, uh, I can't believe it. You're the worst. I hear he's become a recluse after graduation, but I think he deserves it. I heard his mother's husband also found out and started blaming her for getting his admission to the college revoked, so they've been living apart. After that, I went through the last month of pregnancy without incident and gave birth to a healthy baby boy. Mom, the baby's so cute. <laughs> yes, he is. Be a good sister, okay? Yeah, I'll do my best. I was really scared about this incident, but I'm going to enjoy the pool as much as I can when my son grows up, because I couldn't enjoy it this time. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. What did you think of today's episode? Leave a comment and let me know your thoughts on today's story. And if you enjoyed it, don't forget to like and subscribe!